Today, we live in a bit of a climate of fear, don't we? Sea levels rise, weather becomes more extreme, sickness rages out of control. In our lifetimes, we've seen certain animals go extinct due to deforestation, exploitation, etc. We wonder whether humans might be the next, not us maybe, but our children's children. We've seen on the news maybe that uh, Prince George asked um, David Attenborough what animal he thought was going to be extinct soon, uh, what would be next. And David Attenborough's response was, let's hope that there will, won't be any because we can do something about it. Let's hope there won't be ever any. But the situation is that, um, here we go again, that our world has gone pear shaped. Um, our world is in a mess. But I said our world, is it really? Our world, the uh, Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. So whose world? It's God's world and us who live in it. So oh, what is our role in the world? I'd like us to look at a couple of roles we have. And the first one is that we are God's guests. The, um, uh, the, the reading that Liz read for us has Towards the end of this passage here, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can probably, hopefully see, blessed are those who choose and, who, sorry, who you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. Now, when I first read this, I was a bit puzzled uh, because at the top of the psalm, you'll notice the, it says the psalm of David. And there was no temple in the time of David. So, and even when there was, people didn't really live there. They didn't, um, uh, God didn't bring them near to live in your courts. So David the psalmist has got something else in mind. He's got God's house as the world. God lives here and invites us to join him. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? And as God's guests, we are called to accept his hospitality but not abuse it. A guest who steals the shampoo, uh, stuffs everything down that he possibly can, and leaves a mess behind him. Uh, it hasn't realized the privileged position that he's in or they're in. They certainly aren't showing respect and appreciation for their host. So first of all, we can be thankful for the beautiful, wonderful home he has invited us to be part of, to be with him in. But we're not just God's guests. We are also God's farm workers. Uh, 
Um, the Bible says that um, in Genesis, talking about the first man and woman, they were, and we are, put into the world to work it and take care of it. And as we do so, we are free to eat from the fruit of any tree. So, as well as doing the farm work for God, we are welcome to take benefit from our world. But we need to be sure that we're taking care and taking benefit in the way that the owner of the farm requires. And this particular farm, this particular farm owner is not an absentee landlord. He gets his hands dirty himself. Verse 9 of the passage we're looking at. You care for the land and you rich and water it and you enrich it abundantly. You, God, care for the land. God cares for this world even more than we do. And God is uh, not doing just the basic minimum. He is doing the maximum. Towards the second half of this year, we've got God crowning the year with your bounty. A fullness there, an abundance of generosity. Your carts overflow with abundance. Your hill, the grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The mountains are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn. I um, like this uh, picture of um, that rings bells with, uh, with Pakistan, but is how things would have been then. The, and you can see the generosity there, the abundance, the carts um, that are um, that are overflowing with corn, uh, and that is the sort of thing that we've got in mind there. So, in this world, we are God's guests and God's farm workers working alongside Him, working in His way. But we've messed up, and so we need to and we can accept God's forgiveness. When we were overwhelmed by our sins, the psalm says, you forgave our transgressions. Yep, we have met up, messed up, but we can deal with it. We have damaged our world, abused our world, but we can ask him for forgiveness but we can also ask God for help the verse before that one says you that's God you who answer prayer to you will all people come so we can come to God the God who owns this world and is actually living here with us, or shall I say, we are living here with him. And we can admit that we can't manage by ourselves and ask him to both intervene and to train us in the way that we should be caring with him for this world. Now, how we do it, I think we individually need to make our own decisions based on the evidence. It's very complicated as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's not easy to decide, um, do we 
get a new petrol, a new, sorry, electric car, which will take more uh, fuel um, to manufacture it, and uh, probably the batteries uh, use a lot of, um, of minerals that are in shorter supply. Uh, it's, it's a difficult balance sometimes. Uh, but we are called to look after God's world. And we um, need his guidance and his help to know how we're going to do it, what we're going to do. So, whoops, why did that happen? No, sorry, I'm trying to, oh yes, I'm there again. And David Attenborough was talking about this hope. We hope animals won't get extinct. And the, with Extinction Rebellion and all the other things that we're being told and um, as a sort of being, the guilt can get laden upon us. But here we've got the basis of a real hope that many other people don't have. God, our Saviour, who is the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. The farthest seas, the Great Barrier Reef, the ends of the earth, the Antarctic. He is the hope of the ends of the earth and of the Father's seas, God, our Saviour, the hope of all the earth and of the Father's seas.